Liverpool striker Robbie Fowler is reflecting on the lessons he learned on the pitch. He's read his book. The Anfield legend is currently in Australia managing Brisbane Raw. And Ooh. we can now join him live. Good morning to you, Robbie Fowler. Good morning to you both. How well, are you? Isn't that a sickening sight? So over here, You're it's freeze, golf freezing cold, dark, <laughs> grim and horrible. And there's you, Robbie Fowler, on a beautiful summer's day in Australia, looking like the cat that got the cream. Where did it all go wrong, Robbie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still wishing. It... <laughs> I haven't got a clue where it went wrong. This is a, this is the life over here to be. What, uh, Robbie? What took you over uh, to Australia? And tell us a little bit about Brisbane Raw. Your managing team, having been, you know, such a legendary player. Yes. Um, how do you impart your knowledge to your teammates? What's the key to being an excellent manager? Well, obviously, the key to excellent management is uh, is getting the right results. I think I've had a, a obviously a decent playing career, uh, and I think people have this probably assumption of me that I was a bit of a carefree player, you know, a bit of a, a bad attitude. Uh, but I also thought I had a lot to give. You know, I was I was a decent player, um, but you know, football is probably the only thing I've ever wanted to do. The only thing, uh, well, the only thing I've needed to do. You know, I love the game, um, and obviously, after playing, you know, coaching and managing is the is the next best for me. So, you know, I wanted to go away. I wanted to do all my badges. Um, you know, I'm pro licence holder, which effectively means um, it's the highest, you know, coaching badge you can get in well football. Uh, and obviously, you know, it takes me over to, uh, to Brisbane. You know, there was a position that did, did come up over here. Uh, and as soon as it did, I just put my name down for it. And, uh, you know, eventually I got it. You know, went through the process of, you know, plenty of interviews, um, you know, uh, plenty of phone calls, plenty of... Uh, um, well, plenty of evidence, basically, and eventually got the job. And you know what? I'm, I'm loving it. You know, now, Robbie, um, as an Arsenal fan, really we've always had a soft spot for you because there was a famous moment when uh, you, you went one-on-one -on -one with David Seaman, the Arsenal goalkeeper, and it was uh, a penalty, and you jumped up immediately and said to the referee, no, it's yeah. not a penalty, not a penalty. I couldn't imagine anyone doing that these days, but it made you a bit of a hero amongst Arsenal fans, uh, despite the fact yeah. you also scored the fastest hat-trick <laughs> of all time against us. Um, do you, let me ask you this, about the way the game has gone. When you were young, you came from a very working-class background, like so many players for so many teams, mm -hmm. and, you know, in those days, the young players would clean the boots of the older players, all the rest of it. It was a very different culture. Now you've got 18, 19-year-olds yep. earning, you know, millions and millions of pounds. Uh, has it changed irrevocably? Are managers able to exercise any real control over young players in the way that they used to when you were young? Well... Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it's obviously a lot tougher now. Uh, I think certainly when I was coming through, I think we were left to our own devices and just sort of left to sort of get on with it and uh, and and try and become a man, if you like, sort of overnight. Uh, nowadays, you know, the players are mollycoddled. Um, you know, everything is is basically done for them. You know, we look even we as as players did live in a bit of a bubble, but. Um, I think even more so now, you know, the Premier League players are, you know, the such, I mean, the, the bubble they live in is quite frightening compared to, uh, compared to the real world. Uh, but look, you know, at the end of the day, they are entertainers. Uh, whether we like it or not, you get some good ones, some bad ones. Uh, you get some ones with bad attitudes, you know, but the majority of them, uh, you know, I've got the right attitude. So, you know, we don't all tarnish the, the, uh, the bad players with the, um, you know, with the wrong brush. So, it, it's, look, it's a lot tougher now. Uh, obviously, if, you know, a few of your guests in the past, you know, talking about um, you know, the way you sort of treat people. Uh, I think football is exactly the same. You know, we've got to treat players uh, and people in and around the game the right way. Where do you sit, Robbie? Last night was the Ballon d'Or. Lionel Messi uh, won his sixth Ballon d'Or. I think Cristiano Ronaldo's won five. They are, you know, arguably the two greatest to ever play the game. Are you a Messi or Ronaldo man? You would have played, I imagine, more against... Ronaldo, possibly. <laughs> uh, or a Virgil van Dijk man. I'm a, yeah. yeah. Squashed I, in the middle. I'm a Ronaldo man, but there are plenty of Messi fans out there who think he's the greatest. Uh, where, look, where do you sit? Yeah. Well, look, it's, it's tough. And I've had spells in, certainly, in my career and what I'm watching where I think, you know, either or have been better in certain situations. Uh, I mean, there's been times where I think, you know, Ronaldo has been incredible and there's been times where I think Messi has been, you know, unbelievable as well. Uh, saying that, I think the player who should have won the, the Ballon d'Or last night was uh, certainly Van Dijk because if you look at his performances and, and where Liverpool are now to where they were years ago, 
Um, I think it's just incredible, and it's because of players like him. So uh, I'm just sort of sitting on a fence in, in terms of who's the best player. Oh, you know, that doesn't sound been, like you were sitting uh, on the fence more there. Leaning towards, uh, well, the like Ronaldo all one. good scousers, you came down firmly on the side of a <laughs> Liverpool player, which is absolutely <laughs> what I predict. Liverpool are well, on no, fire. No, well, obviously, yeah, but I've, Pierce, Listen, I've just said that. Listen, I'm going to pay you a compliment. Uh, Don't worry, it's coming. It's coming. You've got the manager I wanted at Arsenal, Jurgen Klopp. He's completely transformed Liverpool. You've got yep. an incredible team right the way through the team. Goalkeeper, defence, midfield, attackers. Just a perfect team in many ways. You have 11 points clear now. Is this yep. going to be the year? You obviously won the Champions League, but the one I'm sure <laughs> every Liverpool fan wants is to win the Premier League. Is this going to be the year? Piers, do you want me to give you the clichéd answer or the, the Liverpool fan answer? I, I mean, I don't know what you want. They're probably the both the same, aren't they? So the cliché. <laughs> the cliché is... <laughs> yeah, well, I think the, uh, the clichéd one is, look, there, there is many, many games to go in the Premier League. Give me the but Liverpool look, I'm one. I'm sitting here now as a, as a Liverpool fan. Uh, and I'm sitting here as a Liverpool fan, and I just think they're an incredible team to watch. Um, one of the problems they had last year was obviously Manchester City. One of the problems Man City have this year is Liverpool. Uh, can Liverpool win it? Of course they can. I think they're by far the best team in the Premier League at the minute. Uh, so I'm, I'm like that, keeping the fingers crossed that they do do it. I and think what, they will. And what do you, you, you've obviously travelled many thousands of miles to get away from Brexit and the election, but w are you watching what's going on here? Are, are you planning to vote? <laughs> Uh, well, obviously, I can't because I'm over here, but, um, you know, it's it's actually wrecking my head in at the minute because there's that many people, you know, saying one thing, there's people saying another thing. Uh, so being over here has probably been a bit of a, a blessing. Um, I'm, I'm sitting on a fence with this one again because <laughs> I think whoever sort of gets in, you know, we're, we're hearing all sorts of lies, we're hearing uh, all sorts of, you know, promises that probably people will will renege on. So, um, I mean, I haven't got a clue, to be fair. I know, obviously, the... The general consensus is, uh, is you know, we, we want to stay in. Uh, and certainly from a Liverpool point of view, I think the EU uh, certainly looked after us with, uh, with a lot of money uh, ploughed into you know, the city of Liverpool. So uh, if I was to sort of you know, join any campaign, it's certainly um, you know, looking after us. Final question, Robin. It's a more serious one. Uh, we just saw uh, David Duckerfield, who was acquitted of any wrongdoing in the Hillsborough disaster. We have this extraordinary situation, which I'm sure is very painful for everyone connected mm -hmm. with Liverpool, where the killing of these people was deemed unlawful, and yet nobody has been made accountable. Yep. What, what do you make of that? I think it's quite disgraceful. I think when you... I mean, you've just hit the nail on the head there. When you say it's... Uh, um, well, it's an unlawful killing you know, someone's got to be held accountable uh look you know we'll we'll, we'll go through courts um but you know i think the majority of people know that you know someone you know, must be to blame um and for the way it's sort of getting swept under the carpet i think it's quite frightening to be fair so yeah as far as i'm concerned it's uh it has been the wrong decision um and it's probably a little bit an expected thing from me to be fair because i, I just think it's you know been totally dealt with the wrong way. I think the people of Liverpool, the families of, uh, you know, the, the people who have lost their lives, uh, you know, wanted answers. And unfortunately, we haven't had the answers that we probably wanted. Well, 96 people were unlawfully killed. That was the conclusion. And nobody has been made mm. accountable or brought to justice or made responsible. And it seems to me completely scandalous. Uh, Robbie, it's great to talk to you. The book, uh, My Life in Football, Goals, Glory and, and the Lessons I've Learned. You were one of the best strikers I've ever seen. Would have loved you at Arsenal. And really appreciate you taking time out of your really busy day yeah. in the Australian sunshine to talk to us yeah. today. Piers is feeling really <laughs> sorry for you. Pleasure. Thank, th thanks for having me. Lovely to talk to you, Robbie. Should be called Goals, Glory and Golf. What a player he was, Robbie Fowler.